And I'm attracted to poems and songs and stories that create really strong visual images. And that's the case with this next story. And I got to perform it on a very special occasion. My father had just returned home from the hospital, recovering nicely from a heart attack. And he had friends over for dinner. And you might remember being a child and your parents having friends over for dinner. And if you had some talent, like playing an instrument or tap dancing or something, they'd, they'd trot you out there and have you show off for them. And if you were like me, you'd kind of like duck and cover. <laughs> uh, unless you were a born ham, which I, I couldn't have been because we were raised kosher. <laughs> but um, I, I thought that once you got to be an adult, they would stop doing that to you. <laughs> but no, no, no. Sure enough, after dinner, they said, Jackson, tell a story. Well, I, I was ready with a story. Uh, to celebrate my father's health. And I knew it was one that he'd appreciate the source of. It's an old Hasidic tale, uh, perhaps first credited to Rabbi Nachman of Braslo. It appeared in the Dybbuk, the Tale of the Seven Beggars. The Traveling Yiddish Theater did a version, as did my friend Martin Steingesser, and, and I've had my way with it too now. And so I love this piece. It seems to get more timely because there's an image of it about life being held together by a thread. And as our planet gets assaulted and we have so much challenges keeping healthy in this world, I think that that, that image of this thread is really critical. And I'm just hope we don't understand it, but I'm just hoping that this cosmic thread retains its strength and its magic. So my father's tears of appreciation were perhaps the best reward I've ever gotten for a story, and it's called The Heart of the World. At one end of the world, there's a mountain, and on this mountain there is a rock, and from this rock there flows a spring. And at the other end of the world, there lives the great heart of the world. Now, you all know that each thing has a heart. And the world itself has a heart of its own. And it's beating. That's what keeps the world alive. Now, the great heart of the world sees the spring. And it is filled with desire. It is filled with longing. It is filled with love for the spring. And of course, it wants to be closer to his beloved. And so he leaves his place and he starts to move. And as he's approaching the mountain from which flows the spring, he realizes that if he takes another step, he will no longer be able to see the top. He will lose sight of the spring. And if the great heart of the world should lose sight of his beloved, even for an instant, then he will die. And the world will die. And all the, the creatures of the world Will die. So the great heart of the world stops where he can still see the spring and now all he can do is look. He can only look. But then he notices that the sun is going down and he realizes that when darkness comes and night falls he, he will no longer be able to see the spring. He will lose sight of his beloved and he is going to die anyway. And all the creatures of the world too. So the great heart of the world pours out its sorrow in a song. He sings to his spring. And the spring hears it. And she answers it with her song. And these two songs, they meet in the air and they become one song. This one song spreads across the earth along with the colored rays of sunset which pours out and touches the hearts of all the creatures and it awakens their song. And just at the moment, the sun is going down and all of life is joined together in this outpouring of color and of song. There walks on the earth one of the just, one of the shining, a Lamed Vavnik. And she is a weaver. And she gathers all these heart songs and these colored rays of light 
and of love. And she weaves them. She weaves them into time. Just enough time to make another day. So that all of the hearts can live one.